So this throttle, even in sports mode, the A mode, is the on-off is way better than the Trans Alp guys, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm stuck behind white vans all over the place and in traffic. And this on-off is way better than the Trans Alp. Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day because any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. Yep, we're on it. I've been waiting for this, the 800 DE. Loving the motor. The motor can make or break a bike. It's making this bike. Just like the Trans Alp, that motor there with the Honda made that bike. This is making this one too with the low down torque a little more down down low torque than the Honda that's for sure I'll be doing a lot of comparisons to the Honda today simply because those are the two newest bikes that we have out today now say comparisons so with this new bike all new this year of course you guys know let's take a look at where the numbers fall say why do we have to look at the numbers well it just gives us an idea of where we stand. I have these arranged by weight since this, this is a middleweight adventure bike, so weight is very important. You can see at the top it starts at 204 and goes all the way down to 233, ending with the BMW. But this is kind of a little heavy. Take a look at where this sits in this weight class, 230. There's only three bikes heavier, the Guzzi, the CF Moto, and of course the BMW. So that's not necessarily a good thing uh, right there, Suzuki. But on power, it's not bad. Torque, I'm loving the torque and how down low it is. That is working very well. With the 776 parallel twin, 270 degree firing order, loving that. Uh, also with the price, it's kind of right there. It's a grand more than the Honda, so ooh, that was a tough nut to crack. But this has a few more things. Fully adjustable suspension, and the Honda doesn't. It's just preload. So, uh, you know, you're giving it to, and this comes with a quick shifter. Although you can option on the Honda for the quick shifter, but this, uh, but then the Honda, you can't get fully adjustable suspension. That will cost some bucks if you customize that. Uh, taking a look at the other stuff there with the emissions, fuel economy, tank size, everything's within play here, within the margins. Now, these are just the numbers, guys, and the numbers tell us about where it fits with the competition. And you guys can see there are 16 bikes here. That's a lot of bikes. So now, how does this feel in the powertrain on the street? Now, now let's go all the way down to first here. And let's try with just medium throttle. Oh, that's a little abrupt. Okay, we're already at the speed limit. <laughs> Not bad though, for the quick shifter. But this, this powertrain, it has torque. Right here, I'm at four grand and it's, oh yeah, it's rolling right on, no problem. Ah oh, yeah, this, this thing rolls. It's four grand, no problem. I'm loving this, and, and it's quiet, it, but yet I like the sound. It's a nice, see that? Yeah, oh yeah, there's drop it a gear. And how accurate this quick shifter is. Uh, it's a little abrupt sometimes, but most quick shifters are. Of KTM, they're always abrupt. Uh, tri Triumph, it depends on the bike. BMW, almost always. <laughs> Unless it's the 1000R or RR, it's the S, if it's the S series. Oh wow, this is a lot of wind. <laughs> it is hitting me right here in the mouth uh, and in the chest. Oh, definitely have to get the larger touring screen. Oh. <laughs> Wow, okay, let's get down to... That's a lot of noise, man. That, 
There's no way I would do Autobahn Highway. I'm doing 120 kilometers an hour, so about 74 miles an hour. I cannot take this. Wow, that's a lot of wind. On the, on the sides of the chest, here and here, all up the arms, and from the mid helmet up, I'm getting plastered. Man, this is unexpected. I would have to get, definitely, if I was to buy this bike, get the bigger touring screen. This is unbelievable. Although I'm riding into the wind, so it's as if I'm doing maybe 130. But still, this is, woo! I would not run ride the Autobahn with this bike. That is for sure. Oh man, I would last 10 minutes and then I would want to get off the Autobahn. That is for sure. And I don't want to go any faster. Where, where is the trans out? With the lower screen, I could do 130, 140, 150, and it was still tolerable. This is not tolerable. Wow. Yeah, I keep saying wow. I, unbelievable. The lack of aerodynamics on this bike. Now I'm up to 135. Yeah, my phone might be in the way of the Speedo. Man, alive. This is some strong wind. And the buffeting and everything is just unbearable. Now the vibration, a little bit in the foot pegs, almost non-existent in the hands though. Hmm, interesting, okay, now the speed limit's 120. Let's bring her down, to, back down to 120. Just 74 miles an hour. Oh. No. <laughs> Gangsta. Hells no, I would not take this on the Autobahn. I'm trying quad lock for the first time and I have gloves on. Let's see, let's try it. How does, how does this work? I can't. Uh, that, there. Okay, I guess it's on. Yeah, okay, it is, it's on. Now, how do I take it off? Oh, ah, okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I get it. See how I have this mounted? Right here with the ram mount, the claw, then a two inch arm there, and then another ball there. Yeah, that works. I like it. Coming up to the fully adjustable suspension, preload, rebound, and compression, 43 millimeter, 220 mils of travel. So they have a little bit of a serious off-road mentality with that much travel. 310 discs on, yes, tubed 21 inch tires. I am liking this gold, gold, oh, especially in the sun there. <laughs> I'm liking that, but two piston Nissans, just two piston Nissans, just like on the Transalp. It seemed like, what are you doing? You're copying each other. But Japanese do things that are safe. Same here. Look, you have a remote here. This is very, very nice. I love the remotes. Same 220 mils of travel there. One piston, this one way up here with a 260 disc. Now, with this brand new frame that Suzuki developed and this bolted on subframe, how do these numbers feel on the street? So I can lean in with this and feel confident. Okay. Yeah, I feel confident. A little better than on the Transalp, though. Hmm. Interesting. Didn't think I would be saying that. Uh, yeah, but leaning in is, is okay. This is not a problem. The It's sticking a line. I'm liking that so far. It's really sticking this line. What about the front brake in a corner? Oh, nice. Nice front brake. Let's try the rear brake. Yeah, there I could hear it. That was nice. I good feel, good feedback hmm. for both front and rear. And let's throw her over a little bit here. I have no idea where I'm going or what this corner has at an end there. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, so uh, the suspension, the chassis, 
I'm liking the brakes. Ooh, dark all of a sudden. Okay, there. I'm liking the front is a little soft. I would stiffen it up just a hair. Although for off-road, this is perfect. But yeah, but I'm not off-road right now. <laughs> so whew. the rear, I would loosen up a little bit on the preload and the front, I would tighten up the compression just a couple of clicks. And then it would be set for me and my weight. I'm not bouncy enough yet <laughs> on the rear front it's too bouncy uh, you don't even uh, on, a, on a trail like this no you don't even need anything bro oh, this is fun <laughs> you could rip through here sitting down oh bump, 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 bump. okay oh, oh this thing's nice okay <laughs> oh, oh yeah oh, no problem that's just a <laughs> uh, this suspension soaking this up. This is fun. <laughs> okay, now it's boring again. <laughs> We're going back to pavement. Coming back to the subframe again, this is bolted on. Uh, here's where you would hook up the hard parts for the racks, for the cases and top rack and so on. Uh, this seat is not adjustable. 855 now if you say well, what if it's too high or too low you can get the high seat at 885 or you can go down to the low seat option which is 835 so this is right at the 885 and for me this is working guys i'm i cannot there i just hit i'm on the balls of my feet though even when this is compressed Where's the Africa Twin or the uh, Trans Alp? Sorry, I was almost on flat footing it. So this suspension, maybe I could loosen up the uh, preload a little bit, and maybe I'll be on the able to flat foot it with this. Uh, so this seat height, I think, is the seat I would take for my height and my leg length. I wouldn't go lower or higher. I'd leave it alone. 20 liter tank filled up this thing of course you guys know 230 kilos which is towards the heavy end of the competition how do these numbers though translate to the street oh can i get the green oh 45 yeah get the smiley face yeah <laughs> oh this thing even in a little village when you're just putting around obeying the speed limits because this is what we do guys uh, this this is uh, so light so easy back and forth this does not feel like 230 kilos I do notice the 21 inch front though uh, that's where I wish Suzuki would make a, a, a street more street version of this a 19 uh, and tubed or uh, tubeless tires instead of tube tires uh, but here with this 21 inch yeah you can hit every manhole cover every bump and without worrying about shaking your fillings out that is for sure a quick shift down to the second people crossing the street everything is so easy and smooth with this bike i am pleasantly surprised suzuki thank you for making a bike that when you need to obey the speed limit, and we all do, 99% of the time, hopefully, uh, it's still fun to ride, still easy to ride, still gentle enough. Oh yeah, no problem. So in, in a little village like this, this is a piece of cake. It, it doesn't get much easier than this. Coming up to the left handlebar, very basic, just like on the Naked 800. Again, your mode button operates this here. You can go in between them and adjust all of these to however you want. Uh, and I have it on gravel right now. And then you have three there with the uh, uh, modes and then also ABS. Uh, you can also turn the ABS off also for the rear tire only though, if you want. Um, also, if you shut the bike off and turn it back on, the ABS comes back on, but you can immediately shut it off right away, just like the Tenere does. 
so it's the same. I am liking this simple laid out display though guys very simple rpm speed gear really that's all you guys want and and i don't need reading glasses i can see it just fine so overall guys am i liking this bike yes i am uh would i buy this bike ah i thought i would like it more than I do, and then I actually do after riding it, because I like the naked better than this, and how that performs and functions. Uh, it seemed like Suzuki was trying to draw a line between the street and off-road group, and it's hard to do either one well. When you do one or the other, you can do one or the other well, but to do both well, very difficult something that BMW with the GS's do very well. Uh, I probably would be happier if Suzuki did like KTM street off-road, Triumph street off-road with their Tigers, uh, and also the BMW with the GS's, the 750 versus 850 street off-road. If Suzuki had done that and gave this a 19 inch instead of a 21, this would be doing much, much better in a corner. Uh, yeah, that would be my suggestion, but uh, the Japanese generally don't do that. Separate the models, they try to do an all-in-one. Uh, is this more off-road capable than the 650 V-Strom? Yes, definitely, for sure. Is this a better bike, street or off-road, than the 650 V-Strom? Yes, definitely. Boom, this bike's getting two thumbs up. But there's 16 bikes in this group that they have to compete against, and that's the problem I see with this bike. Is it a good bike? Yes. Is it good bank for buck? Yes. All of the above, two thumbs up. But when you start riding the other bikes in this group, and at this price point, there are other options that I might choose instead. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. As always, guys, ride safe. That's most important on the list. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care.